Welcome to Living Water Bible Fellowship. We hope that what you are about to hear is encouraging to you in your walk with Christ. Make sure to stay tuned afterward for more information. Ooh, amen. Isn't our God great? Yeah, amen. Thank you. I was waiting for the last set to sing out as loud as I could. You know, the first two services, I kind of held back because I wanted to save my voice. Was, thank you, Colin. Thank you, worship team, for uh, helping us worship our risen Savior today. What a privilege to honor Him. What a privilege to love Him. What a privilege to be known as His. Man, I can't believe it. God would love us so, and God would give us such a wonderful hope. Would you please open your Bibles to Matthew 28, the Gospel of Matthew 28. Today we're talking about hope, the hope that is found in that unshakable God, Jesus Christ. Uh, Matthew 28, please, verse 1. Anybody go to that Easter egg hunt yesterday at Cole Park? Man, I saw some video of that. That looked crazy. Woo! But uh, nothing crazy about uh, what's going to happen when the Lord comes back. It's going to be beautiful and glorious and tremendous. He's come alive and he's coming back. Now after the Sabbath, towards the dawn of the first day of the week, your Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I've told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. And there they will see me. Love that last part where they worshipped him. They knelt and they worshipped him. Our Lord Jesus Christ is worthy of all praise. He's worthy of worship. He who rose from the dead now rules all things. He's worthy of all praise. Uh, this, this passage, it's, it's great because it, it starts with darkness and it moves to light. You know, in Matthew, the Luke, Mark, the John, they kind of set up their gospels in different ways, the themes, the pictures. But man, you've got to know, when they came to that tomb... Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, when they came, and the, the other Gospels tells us there's some other women involved, they came to the tomb. It was dark. I mean, the sun was coming up. It, they, they, had, they waited till the light came so they could see, but their mood was dark. Their hope was dark. They didn't have any hope. Mary Magdalene, you know, she saw Jesus on the cross. She saw him die. She saw him taken off. She followed uh, Joseph of Arimathea, where they took him to the tomb. They, she saw him put in that tomb, and, and as the stone rolled over, it was just, you can imagine the weeping, you can imagine the veil of tears, you can imagine just the, the horrible moment when he was closed off. And that Friday, late afternoon before the Sabbath started. And then all the rest of the disciples, you know the ones who ran? All the ones who deserted Jesus? All the ones who forsook Jesus? No one has any hope. No, nobody has any, like, an expectation of the future. You know what hope is? It's a confident expectation of the future, that your life is going to be good, that your life's going to work out, it's going to be okay. None of these people expected to be okay. I mean, they put all their hope and their future, their joy in Jesus Christ. It, they saw him as the Messiah. You know, they didn't understand the whole God thing yet, you know, it, Jesus, but, but they saw him as their hope. Most of the disciples abandon Jesus. Most of them are hiding behind locked doors. They're fearful of getting arrested themselves. They don't know what their future holds because they've been associated with the criminal Jesus. But these two ladies and the other ladies with them, they, uh, they came um, not because they were expecting anything. They, they just came to repackage the body. Perhaps they saw the men and the way that they uh, took care of Jesus' corpse on Friday. It was a hurried thing, a rush thing, and they wanted to do it right. 
the Jewish people, they like to wrap the body a certain way. They put, you know, they bought all the fragrances, the spices, the incense to put on there, you know, to keep the stench of death away. They wanted to do it right. They wanted to honor their dead Jesus. They went that morning, you know, the, the sun's coming up, and, you know, there's so many, so many themes in, in, in literature. There's so many themes in music about the sun coming up and hope arising, Right? It's just this, this, this image of, of life coming in the morning. It's captured the world through the scriptures and through the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. But at this moment, they're, they're, they're just uh, setting their face to, to take care of the corpse, to clean it again and to rewrap it. And we don't know how it played out, but at some point they, they felt an earthquake. They knew there was an earthquake. The, the other gospel writers, you know, they, they're looking at the, the resurrection from different angles, from different, you know, points of view. They, the, the, the accounts, you know, the, sometimes it's hard to put them together. Like, we don't know when the earthquake happened, but we know that it happened. You know, Jesus, when, when he entered Jerusalem for his triumphal entry, it, stu- it shook. The word, the, the city was stirred at his death. You know, there was an earthquake. We looked at that, that, that Friday night. There was an earthquake. It shook. And now at his resurrection, it shook. All, God is, is using creation to say something's happening here. You know, and, and the, uh, the angel comes, and he's, and he's sitting on the rock. He's sitting on the stone. We don't know how long it was. I mean, they, they didn't know. Apparently, the women didn't know about the guards, but the guards have fainted. They're passed out. They've been knocked out by fear. It's, it's quite a scene. Then it gets more hopeful as the light dawns, as light comes up, more light. The angel gives more light, gives more revelation. I know you've come here to see Jesus, the crucified one. I know you've come here to see Jesus, the crucified one, but guess what? He's not here. He's risen. As he said. That's a very important thing. Think think about that. As he said. I wonder what's going through their minds right then. Those ladies, I mean, they, they had lost all hope, and now, what? He's risen. Was it like a... I remember him saying that. Oh, yeah. Or was it they were just so dumbfounded that they didn't know what to do? You know, in, in John's Gospel, Mary's kind of wandering around. She she's, thinks she's talking to a gardener. Where have you laid him? I will, I will take him, I'll carry him. She, she loves Jesus, you know, even his body. She wanted to take care of his body. Here, you know, it's, it's more sudden. And, 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 and man, the angel, is, then, then it kind of ramps up. Look at the tomb. The angel says, look at the tomb. Now, some people think that, um, mistakenly think that, uh, why was the stone rolled away? Some people say, well, Jesus had to get out. You see how foolish that is? Jesus need, didn't need the stone to roll away to get out. He, he rose through the grave clothes. He, he moved through walls. His transformed body, his resurrected, glorified body, it, it isn't limited by space. And, you know, it can go anywhere. The stone was rolled away, not so Jesus could get out, so that witnesses could look in. The angel said, hey, take a look. He wasn't there. So then the angel says, man, i got an assignment for you. Go and tell the disciples. Go quickly. And in the gospel accounts, like the pace, the action picks up. Boom, 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 boom. Things are moving. They're running. He says, run quickly. They're running. You know, we, th- this message we got, we, this message we've been given, this, this story, this account, this historical action, it should be taken quickly to the world. It's good news that the world needs. It's hope that the world needs. That there is a risen Lord who is in control of the world. You watch enough cable news, you're getting depressed very fast. You look at, you spend enough time online, the world's falling apart, there's no hope, there, there's, no, there's nothing to live for. No one's in charge, everything's just chaos, everything's falling apart. You read the Gospels, you read God's Word, it's not falling apart because there's a risen Lord who's in charge, right, who's in control, who gave up His Spirit when He decided, who died when He decided to die. Those, those, those six hours on the cross, those last three hours, when he said it was finished, then he died. He's in control. He'll always be in control. Now he's the risen Lord. It's a hopeful moment. They, they run, you know, they're, they're running. I can just imagine those ladies look on their face. They're, they're afraid, right? I mean, you can't come into the presence of holy without being afraid. In the presence of the holy God, 
uh, I, I've said it before, if you ever see an angel and the angel does, says, if the angel doesn't say, you know, uh, be, don't be afraid, be afraid. <laughs> right? I mean, but the angel says, don't be afraid. And so, the, but they're still kind of afraid, but the dominant emotion is joy. Great joy. And then, then man, they see Jesus. In, in, in Easter's past, I've preached about all the, all the reasons why we can believe the resurrection. And, and there's so many reasons why, uh, so many factors. You know, you, you build a case and you can show all the circumstantial evidence and you can show all the things that go into, that, that it's, it's so overwhelming, the evidence that he's alive. You know, but the, these women, they saw the empty tomb, then they, the evidence, they saw Jesus. And again, they, at the right time, they saw him and, and they just fell to their knees and they just worshiped. The appropriate the appropriate action towards Jesus is worship. He's in charge of all things now, you guys. He has all authority. There is nothing not under his power, nothing not under his rule. He's risen to the right hand of God. He has the name that's higher than any name. That's a very hopeful truth. Because you might be tempted to look at the world. You might be tempted to look at your circumstances and think that you don't have a lot of hope. You might look at your cancer. You might look at your heart disease. You might look at your, your, your family and all the drama that's going on there. You might look at the things that's happening in, in the world or in your place of work or even in your church. You might say, oh, that's crazy. I don't know if I have hope. No, you have hope no matter what if your hope is in Jesus Christ. You can look at your circumstances and try to put your, your hope in circumstances and you will be disappointed always. Because circumstances change like the weather. These ladies found joy. Great joy. And I guarantee you that day, they found their hope again. Hope is what? It's a confident expectation of a good future. Hope is a confident expectation that things are going to turn out all right. I... I these ladies, as, she, as they go find uh, the, the disciples in, in John's you know, different gospels, they're running back and running back and forth. There's a whole group of people that found hope that day, the day of the resurrection. It took some people like Thomas a little while, longer. But they stopped doubting and they found their hope, but they found their hope because he rose from the dead. Uh, some of you... Uh, you know, you're all in different stations in this community. You're, you have different jobs. You have different vocations. Some of you are at the school. Some of you are retired. Some of you are in law enforcement. Some of you are working at the hospital or the college or, or a high school or an elementary school. Uh, wouldn't you say that our community needs hope right now? Wouldn't you say if you look at the opioid epidemic and the heroin epidemic that's going on right now, wouldn't you say that our community needs some hope? If you look at the foster care crisis, all the broken homes and all the kids that need a home that can't find a home today, wouldn't you say that we need hope? The suicide rate in our community, the depression rate, the anxiety rate, the crime rate. Man, we're, we're, we're in need of hope. Maybe you're in need of hope today. Maybe you need a living hope that God will pull you through the things you're going through, that God, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. Uh, I grew up without any hope. I grew up in a home. My mom was a single mom. Uh, us two boys, she did the best she could with us. Um, she struggled a lot. My mom, she'd work two jobs, you know. She, she'd try to make ends meet. And, and it seemed like she'd, she'd work hard and we'd get ahead a little bit and then what would happen? The car would break down. Right? We, she'd work hard. She'd get us in a place again and this, you know, these two stinking little kids just giving her trouble. You know, she'd work hard, and then, and then she'd get sick, and she'd, she'd have to give up that job, or, or something would happen, and her life would fall apart. You know, over time, it seemed like my mom, man, one step forward, two steps back. My whole childhood, she was always struggling and always, always, always in trouble. She kept pushing. She kept pushing because she loved her kids. She didn't, she didn't give up in that way, but I guarantee you there was times she lost hope. My mom, uh, after a while, she, she tried to find her hope in a bottle. She found her, her life of trying to cope with her hopelessness by just trying to erase it and try to, try to get away from it. Uh, I'm thankful this Easter that uh, my mom found a living hope. 
In this Easter, I, I, as many of you, you think about your, your beloved dead, those who you, you've lost, and you think about the joy that's awaiting the future. I'm awaiting the future to see my mom and dad again. But there was times, there was, there was no hope in our house. There was no hope, you know, just uh, a lot of trouble and a lot of heartache, and, a lot of, and I didn't grow up with any hope at all. I didn't have a hope for a future. I didn't have a hope for college. I didn't have a hope, you know, some, you know my, my peers, when I show up to school, they were talking about their, their, their tests or, you know, getting ready for college. I didn't have any hope of that. I didn't have any dreams of that. I just was living day to day. You look around our community, the people that come through these doors, the people that go through different, the doors of different churches, the, the behavioral health in our community, some of, the, some of the service organizations, some of the nurses, the people that, that they're seeing people, our, our, our people in our community there's not a lot of hope out there. And there should be. Because in our community, in our culture, there's this, this, ongoing, this ongoing knowledge that, that God has come. He, he has gone to the cross. He, he died. He was buried. And the third day, he was resurrected. There's so many people that know that story, but they never believe the story. So many people that know that story, but they never put their hope in the risen Lord Jesus Christ keep trying to put their hope in money. The Bible says, you know, don't put your hope in money. Try to, they keep trying to put their hope in possessions or, or their material goods. Don't store up your treasures in, on the earth. You know, the Bible tells us, don't put your hope in the, a new economy or a, a new beginning. You know, the, we, I love our, our politicians in, in our community. They do their best they can. Our politicians try so hard in our community. And it's so overwhelming. I'd love to say put your hope in politicians, but I know <laughs> that's tough. Put your hope in people, and, you know, I don't know, I, I, maybe I, the way I grew up, I'm a little cynical that way, that people let you down. What's really fascinating about this text, you guys, this, this, this historical account, is, is that the women had hope right in front of them, and they, they were hopeless. The disciples had hope right in front of them. They had the word of God right in front of them, and, and they were hopeless. You know, before Jesus went to Jerusalem, what did he tell them? He told them, I'm going to Jerusalem, I'm going to get arrested, I'm going to suffer, they're going to put me to death, and then what's going to happen? On the third day, I'm going to rise again. He told that, 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 those disciples that again and again and again. They didn't believe it. Hope was right there. The Word of God spoke to them, the Word. He told them what the future would be, and they didn't believe it. I don't think there was one disciple that believed what Jesus said. I mean, granted, resurrection is a little bit out of the box. It's a little bit beyond the normal, right? But nevertheless, they had seen Jesus do so much. They had seen miracle after miracle. You know, they saw Jesus resuscitate people from the dead. They, they saw healings. They saw incredible things. They saw Jesus walk on water. They saw him stop the storms, you know, feed the 5,000. But they did not believe it when he said he would die and rise again. And so they were without hope. You know what a living hope is? Is when you trust in something that's substantial and is solid and it will deliver. We can have a living hope if we put our trust in the living God. We can have a living hope if we put our trust in his word, his revealed word. What he says, we can believe it and we can trust it. Jesus told them again and again, I'm going to rise from the dead on the third day. Do you, maybe, you know, again, growing up in a culture, there's that echo in the background. We've all heard it so many times. Maybe from when you were three years old, you heard that. Do you see how crazy that is? Uh, not crazy in the sense of predicting his death. He knew he had enemies. Everybody knew he had enemies. And it's not a big deal to predict when you have enemies that they're going to mess with you or they might kill you. Okay, you don't need to be a prophet for that. But to predict that he would rise from the dead, and then, then the astronomical odds of saying it's going to be on the third day. You know, maybe, maybe he's just this guy out there randomly saying, yeah, I'm going to die, I'm going to rise again. Watch it on the third day, it's going to happen. And then it happens? 
He is in control of death. He is in control of the grave. He's in control of life. He knows the future. He has all power. He has all authority because he's God. You know, uh, if I can cut to the chase of it, because Jesus, before it happened, he said it many times and many occasions, that he would die, he'd be buried, he'd, he'd rise from the dead on the third day. Because he claimed he would rise from the, from the dead on the third day and it happened, you guys, we can trust in everything else he says. I hope you can trust your politicians. I hope you can trust the people in your home. You know, there's a lot of my family members growing up I couldn't trust. They'd say one thing and another thing would happen. I hope you can trust in a, in a lot of things. Maybe you can, I hope you can trust in your bank account. I hope that bank account stays for you. But because Jesus said he would rise again and he rose again, I guarantee you, you can trust him. He, if he can predict that, if he can do that great miracle, defeat death, rise from the dead, Everything else he says, we can trust in. Everything else he's taught, his, his principles on money, his principles on parenting, his principles on, on relationship, his pr principles on the future, you can trust him because he did this. If he said he was going to rise from the dead and it didn't happen, well, there's so many good teachers out there that, that say this is life and this is how to live and this is how to be religious and... <laughs> Once they're gone, they're gone. Once Jesus went, he came back. And I can trust him with my life because of what he said and what he did. Now, you look at this, this, uh, this angel. You know, maybe when we get to heaven, there's going to be like, maybe one of the, you know, maybe Matthew, he's going to read his, his gospel to us and, and give us all the tone of voice. Right? Wouldn't it be neat to know the Bible and know all the tone of voice involved? Like, I wonder if there's sarcastic angels. <laughs> or or there, there's angels that are just kind of critical, you know? Like, what's the tone of voice of this angel? Uh, like in uh, verse, verse 6, He is not here, for he has risen, as he said. Now the angels are watching the saints, right? Maybe this angel saw all the times that Jesus told him he's going to come back. And maybe he's just kind of a little irritated today. I don't know. That they showed up. Maybe his tone of voice is like, he's not here, for he's risen, as he said. <laughs> I don't know. But you guys, they had the evidence, right? Before Jesus told them what was going to happen. They didn't believe it. Jesus has told us how to have a hopeful life. It's your choice whether you believe it or not. Jesus has told us again and again where hope is found. Will you trust him or will you not trust him? Will you believe in his word or will you not believe in his word? If you believe in his word, you have confident expectation that it's going to turn out okay, that life is going to be okay. My life turned around when Jesus Christ came into my life. When I, when I believed what he said, he gave me a new life. He gave me a new beginning. He gave me a new start. I left hopelessness and found hope. If you're hopeless today, if, if the circumstances aren't going your way and you wonder if there's anything really strong to hang your hat on, listen to the word of God. What God says, you can bank on it. And just let's run down this path a little bit. So what I'm saying to you, if, if Jesus said he's going to rise from the dead and he rose from the dead, the resurrection happened, we can believe everything else he says. Well, what else has he said? Well, we got a lot of scripture, but let me just give you a few things that he said uh, very, very quickly. If you look at Matthew 6, <clears throat> this is a very hopeful passage if, you, if you're going to put your hope in Christ. If you're not willing to put your hope in Christ, maybe it's just, uh, you know, blowing smoke or whatever. But chapter 6, verse 24. I wish I would have had this in my house when I was a teenager. <clears throat> Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life. Chapter 6, verse 25. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, 
what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you put, with put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to a span of life? Why are you anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clo clothes the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat or what shall we drink, what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. For do not be anxious about tomorrow, for tomorrow will be anxious for itself, sufficient for its own day, <laughs> for its own trouble. <clears throat> Man, you, you look at this, and, and uh, the world, it says the Gentiles, seek the world that don't have faith in Christ, man, they're so anxious all the time about money, about clothing, about shelter. Man, it just drives them crazy how, how hard it is. Like, oh, what about five years from now if we don't have enough money for, for that or for retirement? Or what, what about college? Oh, man, I don't know what we're going to do. People get so anxious, but those who believe in Jesus Christ, they can have a living hope. Jesus, the one who rose from the dead, he said he was going to rise from the dead. He rose from the dead. As he said, if he said that, he's saying this. You don't have to worry in Jesus Christ. You don't have to worry. He's going to take care of you. You put your faith in him. You don't have to worry about the future. Now, the Bible says you have to work. You know, you just can't sit on the, on the couch playing video games all day. I wonder who's going to pay the rent <laughs> kind of deal. You know, he calls us to be good stewards, of course, and, and that steward his money well and handle things well. There's so many kingdom principles in the Bible, financial principles, etc., etc. But he's saying, you can trust my Father in heaven. He knows what you need. Hopeless people, they don't trust. They get fired and they, and they, they you know, they just get anxious and they get overwhelmed. Hopeless people, the car does break down, and they, they don't know what they're going to do. It's just hopeless. They don't know where the money's going to come from. We who trust in Jesus Christ, who trust in his word, he's told us what to believe. We have the privilege of believing or not believing. We have the privilege of putting our faith in what he said or ignoring it. My Jesus, who rose from the dead who has all power and all authority, my Father in heaven, they're telling me that I don't need to be anxious. I can trust that he'll provide for my needs. I remember when I was a new father, my, my boy was uh, in a Sioux, Sioux Falls hospital, and I was like, I, even then I started to stress a little bit, and I was like, man, I don't know if I, I was in seminary time, I don't know if we have the money, and, and I don't know if we're going to make it, and, and, uh, and I stressed, and, and this passage, it spoke to me. I can be safe in the arms of Jesus. He's got me. You see how this, this works, this believing in God's word? God's word, which is true, has come to us. We can believe it and we can have hope. Jesus is an anchor for our soul, an anchor in our life as things fall apart. We can believe his word or not. I, I, I ask you to please be a people of faith and trust in his word. See what happens in your life. John chapter 3, please. John chapter 3, verse 13. Again, running down this path, if Jesus said he was going to rise from the dead, and he did, we can trust everything else he says. What does he say? Chapter 3, verse 13. No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now again, the world is stressed about death. Man, the world doesn't know how to handle death. The world is freaked out. About, and there's Christians I know that are freaked out about death. Death frightens them. Death, death is something they're scared of. All the religions of the world, all the philosophies of the world, if they have a comprehensive systematic theology, a systematic uh, look at philosophy, they have to deal with the problem of death. What does death mean? What, why, why does it happen? How do you overcome death? All the religions of the world say there's answers to death, answers to the problem of death. Now, uh, there's a lot to respect in other religions. There's, there's a lot of uh, good things, a lot of morals, a lot of values in other religions, right? 
but there's, there, there's no other religion that has a good tour guide for death. There's no other religion, there's no other philosophy that's had someone who's been there and who's come back. There's no other, there's no other religion or philosophy that's had someone come from heaven, descend from heaven in the incarnation, live a life, rise after he died into heaven again. There, there's, no other, there's no other one like our Jesus. He knows about death. He knows about life. He made life. We can trust him. And what does he say? As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now I'm going to tell you what God's word says. If you believe in Jesus... If you put your trust in Jesus, you can have eternal life. Now, this Moses thing, lifting up the, 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 the snake kind of deal, there's a time in, in Israel's history when, when it, they were in the wilderness and the people were griping and complaining and whining, what's new, right? When they're traveling in the wilderness, and, and God had had enough. He sent serpents into their midst. <laughs> kind of a crazy scene. The, the serpents, the snakes are biting the people and they're dying. And they're crying out to God, they're crying out to Moses, and, and God tells Moses to put, make this statue, this, 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 this bronze serpent, put it up on a pole, and we're like, what? What does that mean? He's, he, it's, it's a strange thing, but if, if they wanted to, to stay alive, if they wanted to be healed from the snake bite, they had to look at the object that God had given them, the object of faith. We're saved not by, because of our willpower, we're saved not because of what we want to happen, we're saved when we put our faith in the object that God has provided Jesus has been lifted up on the cross, and now he's lifted up, ascended into heaven. He is the object that you have to put your faith in if you want to have life which is eternal. Now, again, you can come up with your own philosophy. You don't have to believe it. You know, you can come up with your own way of thinking about things, but this is what God says, and this is what Jesus says. And I know that Jesus is true. I know that he knows what he's talking about because... You know the story. He said he'd rise on the third day, and he rose on the third day. And because he did that, I can believe him for everything else. And he, if he's telling me how to be saved, I'm going to trust Jesus. I'm going to do what he says, not what people have never been to death and back again say. I'm not going to believe those people that say, well, this is how death, how you overcome death, if they've never been there. Only Jesus has risen from the dead. Only Jesus has descended from heaven. Living an eternity in heaven as God, he came, he incarnated, he came, condescended, he came to us. He knows what he's talking about. You can believe what you want about how to have life after death. I'm going to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ who's risen from the dead. Won't you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? who has risen from the dead. He is the way you can be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Now you've got to understand this passage a little bit. What's the world? Who's he talking about? He's talking about every human being that's rebelled against God. Every person on the face of the earth, the cosmos, the, the people of the world. If you, if you read the Gospel of John, man, everybody's rejected God. Everybody's walked away from God. Everyone's fallen short of God. The Gospels tell us again and again that nobody wants God. This world, everybody hates God. They want, their, their, their own, they want to be gods themselves. But God so loved all the rebels, all the haters, all the wicked. God so loved all these people that he gave his only son, Jesus came to die for all these broken people. So what? So that whoever believes in him shall not what? Perish. You know what perish means? That's hell. Because a just God, a just God will not let sin into his heaven. He will punish every sin. God so loved the world, he doesn't want that to happen. He doesn't want anybody to perish, but everyone to come to life. Now, I don't understand the, the dynamic, you know, there's, there's the scriptures, man, that there's so much there about the elect and about, about different things that, that are so precious and powerful and wonderful, God's great eternal plan. But I do know this, 
Jesus said, if you want to be saved, you want to have a new life. You know, the eternal life, it's not just this life that goes on and on and on. It's a different quality of life because in the passage, he's talking about being born again. A new life that can start right now. A new life that can start right now that goes on into eternity. A new life, a born again life. I don't know, maybe you've got another philosophy. Maybe you have another hope for when you die, how to overcome death, how to overcome hell. But I know what Jesus has said. He said, if you want to live eternally, if you want a new life, believe in me. That means believe his work on the cross. Believe in his sacrifice. Believe in his suffering for your behalf. On Good Friday, on Friday night, we talked about all the sufferings that Jesus went through. We talked about his crucifixion, how he was pierced for our transgressions and crushed for our iniquities. Jesus said he would die and he would rise on the third day, and he did. And because he said that, we can believe everything else. Now, you, you have your own choice, but I say believe in Jesus and you will be saved. Believe in Jesus and he will forgive your sins. I mean, this passage is, is incredible. I don't have to pay for my sins. I don't have to face the wrath of God if I place my faith in the sin bearer, in the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that great? I hope that nobody leaves here today without being saved. Nobody leaves here today going, being unsaved, walking out those doors, because now you know how to be saved, how to have eternal life. It's not by being a good person. It's not by growing your bank account. It's not by impressing people. It's by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then, you guys, can you bear another scripture with me? Matthew, uh, John 14, please. John 14. Some Christians say, I don't know if I, you know, I don't know heaven. It seems like it's floating around in clouds or something. I, I don't know. People don't know. They, you know I'd rather stay here, really. Uh, chapter 14, verse 1. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. We're, we're looking at some of the things he said because we can trust him and we can believe what he said because of what he's accomplished. Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go prepare a place for you? If I go prepare a place for you, I will come again. And I will take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. <clears throat> yeah, people are like, I don't know, I don't want to go float around in a cloud or something like that. It seems boring. Jesus says he's going to go and prepare a place to those disciples then. And Okay, uh, wonderful. And, and it's like, okay, what does that even mean? He's kind of nebulous, prepare a place, a father's house. But now on this side of the cross, man, we can understand it. This side of the cross, this side of the resurrection, he's going to prepare a place for us. We have an eternal home. And the, the connotation of house, house is warmth, house is security, house is safety. He's going to take us to be where he is, his father's house. It's a safe and secure place. It's a place of love and joy and happiness. We can believe it. We can build our life on it. That whatever happens in this life, however our lives fall apart, we don't want our lives to fall apart. I hope your life is a good life. I hope your, good things are happening in your life. But if things happen, as we know things happen to people in this life, evil things happen, terrible hardships happen. But we know if we have a hope in what Jesus says, we can make it. You know, this life is so short, you guys. This life is so so short, it goes so fast, but heaven is forever. You guys, heaven's going to be great. We can make it through this. You can make it through what you're going through right now. You can, you can make it through whatever trouble or hardship, a divorce you're going through, a, a bankruptcy you're going through, your business is suffering, I don't know, may, maybe the, your, your body's falling apart. You can make it through if you have a living hope. If you have not a living hope, if you have some fake hope or some false hope or you're just wishful thinking, it's a scary thing to have your body fall apart. It's a scary thing to go through a divorce. It's a scary thing to go through hardships and difficulties that the world throws at you. This, this world's hard as nails sometimes. 
But Jesus says, man, believe in me, trust in me, and I've got a hope for you that will never end. I've got a place for you that's glorious and beautiful and wonderful. Heaven's going to be great, you guys. Heaven's going to be great. And, and even, even in this passage, it's not just that he's talking about heaven. He says he's going to come back. He says he's coming back. That's very hopeful to me. Sometimes I make the mistake of watching the news. And sometimes I, I look at the news and I see some of the things they say, how the world's going to end. It's going to end with nuclear war. It's, it's going to end, you know, environmental stuff. It's going to end all, all kinds of crazy ways. We saw on, on Friday night that Jesus decided when he was going to die. And we read in other scriptures that he's, he's going to decide, when he's, the Father's going to decide when he's going to come back. The world's going to come to its appointed end as he decides. He's in charge. He's in control. If he's in charge of the universe, he's in charge of what happens in the world, he can certainly take charge of your life. He can hold you in the greatest storm. He is that anchor he is the unshakable one. Why would you put your hope anywhere else? Why would you put your hope in your health or your, or your, your master's degree or, or your, you know, your high school degree? Why would you put your hope there? That you have some skills that you learned in the trade college or you put your hope in your new girlfriend. She's just so beautiful. She loves me a lot. You have a risen hope in Jesus Christ. You have a future in Jesus Christ. You can have a confident expectation that it will turn out okay if you place your faith in Christ. How do I know? Because on the third day, Jesus rose from the dead. Forty days with his disciples, teaching them and, and sharing with them. And on the 40th, 40 days after his, his resurrection, he ascended to heaven. Pentecost came and the world's been transformed. Now again, you can do what you want. You can place your hope in other things. But I adjure you, I... I, I, I Plead with you. Please put your hope in Jesus the Christ. He's the only one who's risen from the dead. He's the only one who can save you. He's the only one that can give you life, which never ends. Please, don't leave earth without Jesus Christ. Please don't go to the hospital without Jesus Christ. Please don't drive down the road without Jesus Christ. God so loved the world. God so loved you that Jesus came to die on the cross for you. He came to save your life. He came to give you a living hope that will last forever. Leave the other philosophies behind. Leave the other worldviews behind. Leave the other religions behind. Put your faith in a living person. Put your trust in the one who came back from the dead. And when you die, he will take you to the Father's house. And you will live forever in the kingdom of God. Heaven's going to be great. We have a lot to look forward to. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand in the Lord's presence? <clears throat> Guys, I hope that you live a risen life. I hope that you, uh, you would walk with the Lord for the rest of your days. Um, I can testify to you that uh, since Christ came into my life, gone through a lot of trials and tribulations, and uh, God has never let me down. His word is true and is reliable, and uh, you believe in Him, He will hold you for the rest of your days. May the God of hope fill you with all joy. 
fill you with all joy and peace and believing, so by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Father, I pray for us as we leave here today. Thank you for the celebration. Thank you for reminding us, God, where our hope is found. Lord, we ask that you give us power to repent of false hopes, that you'd give us power to leave evil behind and to have the power to walk with you for the rest of our days. May you receive all praise and all worship and all glory. And Lord, we look forward to that day when we stand in your presence and we're able to worship you as Mary, Mary did, seeing you face to face. And uh, Lord, can't wait. Thank you for the confident expectation you've given us of a fantastic future. We love you too. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. He is risen. God bless you guys. Go in peace. Thank you again for watching. Living Water is a gospel-centered, Bible-based church, and our mission statement is to lead people to a life-changing and ever-growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Links and contact information are available in the description below. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to hear from us in the future.